stand for the pledge, please. Pledge allegiance. Thank you. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Mike Curtis. Here. Amber Brown. Here. Jerry Sartain. Here. Gary Farley. Here. Renee Curtis. Renee is on her way. Patrick Hill. Zane Cantrell. Present. We have a quorum. You have the minutes from our last meeting. Are there any changes or additions to the minutes? Move to be approved, Mr. Chairman. Have a motion to be approved. Second. I have a second. Call the roll, please. Mike Curtis. Yes. Amber Brown. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Gary Farley. Yes. Renee Curtis. Patrick Hill. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes, and they are approved. The first item of business we have is a request by Justin Butler, who is asking a special exemption for an accessory dwelling. And what do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 2023-30 involves the location at 6817 Springwater Street. It's a request for special exception approval for the establishment of an accessory dwelling unit involving a property located in the PUD Plan Unit Development Zoning District. And so uh, the applicant is seeking approval for the accessory dwelling unit because the property is less than one acre. And automatically, if you would like to establish an accessory dwelling unit, you must have a minimum of one acre to do it by right. If it's less than an acre, you need a special exception, and that's why he's here tonight. Um, the uh, staff found that the request met the criteria. This uh, area is on a step system, and if approved, they would uh, modify the existing building permit to include the attached accessory dwelling unit. And the applicant did not indicate he's building this as a spec home, but uh, it, if, if approved, it would be required to continually meet the requirement that the owner live in the residence and the second unit is occupied by a family member or invited guest. And so this is the subdivision. We posted a sign near or at the site. It was difficult to tell. And we did receive one phone call from uh, a, a realtor who was asking what the sign was an indicator of and once it was ex explained to them they had no issues with the request and that concludes our presentation we have any questions from our staff Do we have anyone here representing this request if you'll come forward please to the podium You have, give us your name and any additional information you want to share about this. Uh, my name is Justin Butler. I'm the builder on the property. Um, and yes, it is a spec home. Um, I didn't clarify that. Um, and it, the in-law suite is absorbed into the plan. It's not detached or anything like that. So um, I think that's about it as far as that goes. Any questions? Thank you, you may be seated. Thank we'll you. open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this. Close the public hearing, have a motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Mike Curtis. Yes. Amber Brown. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Gary Farley. Yes. Patrick Hill. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. The next item we have is by, from Gene Klein, Terry Klein, and Hunter Meredith, who is uh, requesting a special exemption on a non-commercial storage. Uh, no, we didn't. It will we'll be moved to the end. We've moved it. Sorry. That's all right. I get confused sometimes. <laughs> uh, 
What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 2023-32 involves the property located at 905 West Jefferson Pike. It's a request for special exception approval to allow the establishment of a non-commercial storage facility to be used for personal storage upon a property located in the RM zone. And this is the property that's located off of West Jefferson Pike. There's an existing agricultural structure that was per, uh, that was recorded in 2018, and the applicant would like the ability to continue construction of another st structure located on the property for personal storage. Uh, the applicant indicated that you know, there's no intention of building a principal dwelling on this property. They own adjacent parcels. And um, th so with that being said, we did not receive any evidence that the site didn't perk. And so that's one of the requirements for the non-commercial storage facility um, that the applicant hasn't provided anything, um, any documentation from a soil scientist or TDEC that the site can't be built on. That's yet to be determined. Um, however, this is the site. It's a 13.5 acre site, and um, you will see kind of the frame of the structure that uh, the applicant had started construction on, and once they were aware they needed a permit, they came in um, and asked what uh, they needed to do. And because there's not a principal structure on the property, it requires special exception. And so this is the structure in question. This is to park your RV, is that right? Uh, they, they would like to park personal items, yes. And uh, we did not, we received two informational calls on this request, but no one indicated being in favor or against. Um, we've kind of had a few cases in this area. Across the street, we had a major home-based business come before you earlier this year. Um, that was approved for an auto repair. And staff, um, even though the, the application does not demonstrate meeting all the standards, if the board chooses to approve it, um, we recommend the following conditions. That an inspection must be performed prior to the issuance of a building permit to verify that the existing barn is dedicated to agricultural uses and that the minimum required setbacks continue to be met upon the subdivision of the property, I think that's wrong, and the use must continually comply with the standards for non-commercial storage facilities, garage, workshop, or other structure for private use of the homeowner. We have, go ahead, Gary. How, and this may be here, and I just didn't, I may have read over, but how many possible structures are gonna be on, are they planning on have on here? Okay, so if approved tonight and it is verified that the existing barn is indeed dedicated to agricultural uses. She would have two structures, a uh, agricultural structure and uh, the storage structure. And the storage structure is how, is, is how, how big? You can only have one. How, how, how big is the storage structure? Oh, the storage structure, uh, they indicated in their paperwork, let's see. 35 by 45. Oh, my apologies, that's the wrong case. Okay. You got the square feet in. 40 by 20. 4,500 square foot? Yes. Eight, eight, uh, 800. 800? 40 by 20. Well, isn't that 40 by 20? I'm not entirely, I can't, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Just a um, point of clarity, the structure that you showed earlier, what is that going to be used for? Is that the ag or is that the storage? Uh, let's see, go back. Okay, yes. so this structure here will be used for personal storage. This structure here, the existing barn, should be dedicated to agricultural uses. That's uh, what it was represented as in 2018 when the structure was erected. We just want to verify that it is indeed con dedicated to agricultural use. We have anyone here representing this request? 
you come around, please. Come to the podium, give us your name, and there may be some questions they need to. Klein. Pull the microphone down. Okay. My name is Jean Klein. I live at 781 West Jefferson Pike. I hate this. I'm still confused. All right. We got the, 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 the barn, the agricultural barn. We've got the personal storage. How many more? structures are going to be on this property that you're proposing we don't have anything planned the structure is to house the camper the are well it's not an rv but the camper so that the top of it doesn't get weathered so badly so that it is kind of a carport for the camper there's no other storage and this is for personal storage only okay you realize anything else would have to be permitted also okay all right thank you for clearing my my mind <laughs> What is the, what is the, the the what she's calling the barn being used for right now? Well, uh, we have mowing equipment. That property is 13.5 acres, and it had been in the Johns family for over 100 years. And it was so grown up that when I went to to get on the property, I couldn't find my way out. So he's excavated it, and it looks as you can see, it's manicured now, and we've had it since 2017. So we've got mowing equipment. Uh, he's got a mini excavator. He's got a skid steer. He likes toys. My husband likes toys, and so, so that that's what's in the barn now. A lot of deer heads and a lot of antlers. Thank you. Any other question? Thank you. you. May be seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. Make a motion to approve with steps recommendations. Okay. Second. Call the roll, please. Mike Curtis. Yes. Amber Brown. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Gary Farley. Yes. Renee Curtis. Yes. Patrick Hill. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. Next item we have by May Mayor Rivera, who is requesting a special exemption approval for a uh, major home-based business. This is auto repair. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 2023-33 involves the property at 481 Martha Lane. It's a request for special exception approval for the establishment of a major home-based business involving auto repair upon the property located in the RM medium density residential zoning district. And the applicant uh, was notified by code enforcement um, upon an inspection that determined that the site was out of compliance and had more vehicles than what would be allowed, not tagged. And so the applicant came in and spoke with us about their options and it, what their intentions were. They want to um, work on cars um, at the property and um, I believe that they purchase and sell cars, but that is not done on site. The applicant is willing to, um, they plan to use the front of the property here under a, an, a canopy that will require permitting. Um, it's not reflected in this aerial. The applicant has also indicated, and you'll see in your application packets, uh, that they will uh, gladly install a privacy fence to uh, obscure the, the cars from the neighboring properties. We have received several phone calls in opposition to this request, and we did receive uh, a few letters and emails that I passed out prior to the, to the meeting that applies to this particular application. Uh, the, let's see, the applicant does not plan to establish any signage to advertise the business. That business days of operation will be Monday through Sunday, eight to two, and they are not uh, proposing any additional employees. And this is the result, again, of a code enforcement complaint. And should the board decide uh, to approve we, this request, uh, we do um, 
recommend establishing additional conditions like a uh, limiting number of cars being stored on the property and the installation of the privacy fencing. And that concludes our presentation. Any questions of the staff on this? Do we have anyone here representing this request? Would you come around to the podium, please? Give us your name and any additional information you want to. Mary Mari Barrow at 481 Martha Lane. Uh, my name is Mary Mari Mara, Mary Mara Rivera at 481 Martha Lane. Are you the owner of the business? Yes, sir. How many? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. So how many cars do you have there at one time? I have eight because I'm trying to see which ones, you know, sometimes are easier to flip and sell. Well, I'm, I'm looking in your application. This is a, is a subdivision with lots. How is this going to be compatible with your neighborhood because you live in, in, in the midst of all your, all your neighbors? How would you try to make this compatible where nobody really notices it's there? I mean, I, tr I don't leave a mess around, and also, like, I'm trying to put a privacy fence so that way it won't be in nobody's sight. No heavy machinery is used, just, you know, hand tools. Thank you. How many cars a, a year are you selling? Do I sell? Mm, probably one car every two months. One car every two months? Did you know you gotta have a license to do that? Yes. Yeah, if, if you sell so, so many cars a year, you gotta have a license. It's just something I just started. It's not I've been doing. I've been yeah. doing like cars around here and there. Yeah. How, how many cars uh, are you working on at a time? One. One at a time. Yes, sir. Usually, how many cars do you have parked that you're working on, or or or? Just that one. The cars will be parked, and then as I get parts in, I'll try to get one done and take it out. Well, aren't those? What are those, what, five, is that five cars? So this black little one, that's a personal use, and the van is personal use. The three in the, ba three in the back are the ones that are being, are going to get done. So you're only working on one car at a time, and, and all of those except one are personal use? Two are personal use. Two are personal, what are yes, the other sir. ones that you're not working on, what are they? What are they? One, you said two are personal use and you're working on one. What's the other two or three for? The ones that are just sitting there for me to work on next. Okay, but you told me you only had one. I'm well, how many are you working on and how many do you have backed up to be working on? Working on one and eight part to be worked on. Eight part to be working on? So you've actually got nine total business cars. That's quite a bit for for a, uh, an existing subdivision. And putting up a privacy fence, to me, that would not be very helpful with that many cars being worked on. I have a concern there. Patrick, did you have a question? Well, my thought is just around the hand tools to use air compressors. It's like a little 40 gallon one, nothing major. Okay, that, that's the issue that I see is with, with the sound for the neighbors. And with one of the documents whenever I sat down here that somebody had already put out was there's approximately 20 cars in the lot already. Okay, so you have your personal residence. Do they also, do you have personal cars also parked at the personal residence as well? Okay. If I gotta take it down to five, that'll be no problem. Okay. Well, part of the issue here is with is is with noise from from air compressors. So you mentioned using hand tools. 
So that's more mechanics to me. Yeah, usually the little air compressor just comes out when I need to put airs in the tires. It's not run like for eight hours or nothing. It's just put air in the tire and put it back on. Okay. So what type of work are you doing on the cars? Just oil changes, and when we get rid of the oil, cha of the oil that will be uh, taken back to like the auto shops. Um, replace fenders, stuff, little stuff. I don't like to do major stuff, honestly. I got you. Amber, did you have a question? I did. Are you working on these cars outside or what? And can you also explain what's happening on the inside of that building? So inside I have it for like break area or like storage stuff because I was getting to the point where it's just everything was so crowded I couldn't work on it. So we should, we closed it down and then I put that canopy on it so we can just drive up kind of under it and work on the cars. Hey Mar, um, how long have you all been working on this out there? Um, just started, I just quit my job uh, July because I wanted to get into you So know, you've been several months that you've been doing that? Where, where are you getting people? Is it in the neighborhood or who's coming there? How do you, how do they? Coming there. I'll are do you like online? Public Is, meetings. You're online? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, you may be seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this. If you'll come forward, please. While they're coming up here, Mr. Chairman, does codes have any uh, report on this? Say that again. I was asking, was codes involved with this? Codes received a an online uh, submittal in June of this year, and when we notified Miss um, Mary Marr of the violation, she came in and talked to Danielle and myself, which is ultimately why she's here. Go ahead, come around, give us your name. You've got three minutes. Go ahead. Uh, Butts, v -U -T -T -S. I own a property next door to this said property here <clears throat> on the Mount Herman Road. Uh, this Talk into the oh, microphone. Okay. All right, now can you hear me? I own a house next door to this and it's, it's already looking like a junk pile to me. Uh, and this picture here, I don't know where they got this picture at but that don't portray the actual scene of it. And this is a residential area, as you guys know. It was bought about a year and a half ago. If they wanted to put a mechanic shop in it, why didn't they buy a commercial? Why did they buy this to turn it into? There's five houses close by. There's kids, there's people, people established, people that's lived on this road. This is not a rich neighborhood, as you well know. But everybody pays taxes on that property just like everybody else. And uh, these kids, they say they will start out with this. And as everybody knows, it, it, it compiles itself. Be one or two. Then it'll be seven or eight. These kids trying to study at night, all the music, the grinding, the knocking, the, the beating. Uh, it goes with the mechanic shop will be going on. There's already two junkyards on that road. Uh, we don't I, need we don't need no more junkyards on the road. I, I, I think he's I there. think he's here for the next application. Pardon me. This is this is for the Martha Lane one, not for Mount Herman Road. Oh, it ain't. No, sir. Well, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I thought this was Mount Herman Road. <laughs> uh, we'll call you back later. Okay. See, I apologize, to you guys, for taking my time. <laughs> I thought it was Mount Herman Road. Are you? Okay. I'll be back in. <laughs> I'm Cheryl Hutcherson. I live at 491 Martha Lane. If you're facing uh, Mary's house, we're the neighbor right to the right of her. So we're right next door neighbors. And um, I'm, I never hear any noise from Mary's house. Um, there are lots of cars, but she has a large parking area for cars, and it's never been a problem for her to have cars parked there. I never hear any noise. If she has been working on cars, I've never heard it. I've never heard an air compressor or any power tools. We have two 
We have a teenager and a grade school boy. We homeschool, so we're home a lot. And we're out and about a lot. My kid's up and down the street a lot. Um, her property, her coming and going, her anything related to her house, or people coming and going, I've never noticed excesses excessive amount of traffic, noise, anything. She is a stellar neighbor, and I would just like to put my and my husband's support in for her to have the ability to run a business from her home. Thank you. Anyone else? Be sure you have the right property. <laughs> Anyone else? We'll close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, based on what uh, staff find, findings are, that uh, I make a motion that we deny the request based on that it fails to meet the general requirements for the special exception. Per the uh, comments from staff. Yeah, uh, you know, we really need to take a hard look at, at these auto repair in a in a neighborhood that's already existing. Uh, and I think our, not just here, but the community needs to take a look, hard look at that. Uh, it's nice to have a place, additional place to do repair work, but I question whether it should be done in a residential area or not. Uh, we have a motion, do we have a second? second? We have a second. Call a roll, please, for denial. Mike Curtis? Yes. Amber Brown? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Gary Farley? Yes. Renee Curtis? Yes. Patrick Hale? Yes. Zane Cantrell? Yes. The next item we have is by Jose Cruz, and this is a request for a special exemption for a major home-based business. And let me point out, too, this is a residential zone district. What do you have on it, please? Thank you. Application BZA 2023-34 involves the property located at 409 Mount Hermon Road. It's a request for special exception approval for the establishment of a major home-based business involving auto repair upon a property located in the RM zone. This is the property in question. It's 1.10 acres, and it's located a couple parcels off of John Bragg Highway. The applicant is seeking approval uh, to repair autos from a 40 by 30 detached structure that uh, will be constructed in place of an existing structure. The types of repair service which will be offered by the applicant will include alignment, mechanical work, headlight replacement, and brake pads. No signage is proposed. Business days of operation will be Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 p.m., and no additional employees are proposed. So this is the site in question. This is not the result of a code enforcement action. Uh, the applicant prior to the establishment of the business came in and asked uh, uh, staff what route they needed to go to achieve this as a home-based business and they were advised and applied. So there's a lot, the applicant just purchased the property I think within the last year and um, the site had very, several large structures uh, detached structures on it already. So those were not erected by the applicant. Um, these are photos of the surrounding area. We did receive a, a call from a neighboring property, not really indicating opposition, but concern about the ability to see the cars and if the applicant was planning to establish any privacy fencing. And so, should the board uh, decide to approve this, staff has recommended some conditions, uh, including a privacy fence or vegetation being planted that will provide screening, continued compliance with the major home-based business op, um, regulations. Uh, the applicant will, it, it was difficult to determine whether someone was living at this site, but the applicant will have to reside on site um, or the operator will have to reside on site in order to be eligible for a major home-based business. And the maximum number of vehicles stored on site uh, should be established. 
And that concludes our presentation. And you know, questions you, of the staff. Can you give us, is there any existing businesses or uh, uh, uses that have been approved for this property. It has a lot of buildings there, and yes, I, I don't know what it what it once was. I could not find any record. Um, I did go back to aerials back to 2004, and all of those were there. They may have been um, improved, but the roof lines were already there. Improved meaning repaired. So okay. But there's no conditional use permits or other uses that's been approved before now? No, sir. You Thank know, you. in places like this, uh, maybe they should be asking for a change in, in operation of it out there. Uh, some kind of... Mount Hermon Road has a the history of junkyards and things, so... Yeah, I know you go way out there. Yeah. Do we have anyone okay. here representing this request? If you'll come around, please. That house had, uh, it was known in Rutherford County for all the Christmas lights that they had out there, so they probably stored all their lights in all those outbuildings. Say your name. Jose Cruz. My name is Brian Kemp, and I came to represent Mr. Cruz for a couple of reasons. One, when I met him, uh, I'm on the board of a summer camp for at-risk youth in Rutherford County, known as Youth Incorporated on Percy Priest Lake. Uh, Mr. Cruz came over and fixed our tractor and refused payment. He has helped us for many, many years at the camp, fix everything free of charge. Then discovered that he helps the single mothers get their cars fixed who can't afford it, as well as indigent people at his church. Um, this is a great man. Uh, he asked me to come over and look at his property that he owns, that he purchased, not from me, from someone else, uh, over on Mount Hermon Road. Uh, the building appears to be, to me, that it was used for similar purposes in the past. These structures you ask about, uh, light mechanic work, brakes, this sort of thing. Looks like they also maybe did some cabinetry in there, built some cabinets, that sort of thing. Um, the building is large enough for all of his activities to occur inside that building. It's very well built. Um, the property appears to me not to be adversely affecting very many people because of where it's located there right off the main highway. Don't seem to be anybody behind him there. Uh, I will vouch for his character and his willingness to do what's right. That's why he showed up and asked you uh, before he relocated his family. He wants the better schools for his beautiful daughters, okay? That's why he wants to move to Mount Hermon. He currently lives in Laverne. Uh, his business has grown. He's been very successful there. He wants to improve his situation for his kids. Uh, he does want to live in that house. He does want to be a good neighbor, and he doesn't want to do anything to adversely affect anyone. Is he currently living in the house? No, he's going to move to the house if this gets approved. If it doesn't, he's got to figure something out because he doesn't want to give up helping the people he helps for free and also the people that he makes money off of. So the idea is, is to get your blessing on this then to take his wife and his kids and move there and enroll them in the school up there and then either liquidate or rent out the structure that he has right now that he uses in Laverne for these purposes. I talked to the neighborhood around to my house. Everybody said, okay, I don't know, maybe one person said no, but all the time, the last time I come in here, the, the person coming to you, he don't want to not, to, he don't leave it there. But nobody knows who is there. It, it's okay because I, I'm, I work only this for family and friends because it's my family there. I don't wanna, it's safe, I wanna save my family. I, I understand somebody, why you don't looking for, for commercial property? I'm working on it now. I have another property on Manchester, it's commercial. But it will happen, if I'm working over there, it's commercial, sometimes I bring cars, maybe one or two, maybe clean. Somebody call, hey, this guy working in his house. I don't wanna do, I wanna do something the right way. The, the, I wanna do something good. It's, I don't, I don't come in here for, by, by the nobody. I come in here for help. If somebody in the neighborhood need help, I'm there. If need something, I, I understand now. Everything is expensive for mechanic. Sometimes, a lot of people, I, I don't have money, it's okay. Pay me whenever you can. But it's not my, uh, I don't want, I, I don't come in here for, for make a neighborhood like mad or, 
or something bad. This is why. Jose. He, he is authentic. He's a good man. Jose. Yes, sir. Um, you're, are you renovating the house? Yes, sir. I'm going to. You, before you start a business, if it is approved, you, you've got to be living in there. Yes. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. I, I, I want to say this. I want to commend you for something. For coming up to the county beforehand and not waiting to get, when you get caught doing it after the fact. A lot of times we have it come, people come up here after the fact. I want to commend you for, for trying to get ahead of it and, and, and get permission beforehand before going out there and doing something illegal. Thank, thank you for that. Yes, and I, my family will be there, but still there, but maybe a couple months, it's moved. But it's not, I have to find another place. It's okay, I have another property, it's commercial, but it's in Manchester, but it's okay. I'm okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you. You may be seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who would like to speak on this. If you'll come on up now. This is Mount Hermon Road. <laughs> and again, I apologize to you guys for that uh, mistake on my part. But what I'm saying, there's five Could families around close the there. Turn around. Yeah, speak into the mic. Right. I don't know who I'm going to. All right, there's five families around close in that neighborhood. They're all residential. These people bought this house, so be it, about a year or a year and a half ago. If they wanted to run an a auto shop, why didn't they buy them a commercial lot and house? That's what commercial land is for. Residential, there's kids and stuff in that neighborhood. This will turn loud music. Everybody knows what happens deep down in such an instance as this. Uh, and as far as Mr. Finley, he owned that house. He had antique cars. That's why you see all of them bays. He owned that property for years. He had Christmas lights there. There's probably most of y'all that went by there and saw <coughs> in the past. But that's how come the buildings were there. He had several nice antique cars. And like I say, there's two junkyards on that road. We don't need no more traffic on that road. Why do, why do they select areas like that? Why don't they go to rich neighborhoods and, and buy a house and put their little business in? Uh, <laughs> and that won't float. They, they pick on poor people. People don't have anything else. That's, that's their homes. That's, that's, that's where they've been for years. They don't need somebody playing loud music all hours of night. They don't need, they don't need cars banging. Well, sir, you're looking at me and you're talking to me. I, I don't know why. Why don't you well, talk to I'm the rest talk, of everybody? I don't know who all I am talking to. <laughs> Maybe I need three or four mics. Has there been loud music already? Pardon me? Has there been loud music there? Uh, not since I've been there, but they've only been there a year and a half. They've been working on there since they've been there. Well, you said didn't want loud music and such, so. That goes with a car lot, the repair shops. I'm, I'm, I'm going through another instance just like this, almost, right there, just as we speak. You know what, well, I'm not. Another question here. I, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. If, for example, if this was approved with guidelines set up that are about the planning department, and he was required to maintain these same guidelines by the codes department and not get to the loud music, not get to all what you're talking about. Okay. Would that make you happy? Uh, it would make me happy if it make everybody else happy in the neighborhood. Okay. And if you go, if, if you, I, I don't know, you guys, you're, you're, you're in a, uh, if you go to codes department complaining, I shouldn't say this, but I'm gonna say it. That, okay, okay, we'll go see about it. Well, uh, two now, hold, weeks later. Uh, hold on just a minute. W w this lady right here is the director of codes. Okay, good, I, good. I, and, and, and they do their job. Okay, I commend her for it. But I've had some other experiences with it. All right. I about had to beg them to come out with some, some things for me. I, 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 I kind of doubt that. 
Well, you can call me a liar if you want to. I didn't That's call you a liar. I just said I doubted it. Privilege. But I'm I, I just said I doubted it. Okay. I didn't call you a liar. Your, your three minutes is up. We understand what you're saying. Thank you very much. I apologize for getting up here before. Oh, that's all right. You guys have a nice <laughs> Anyone day. else? Come forward, please. Thank you for being here. You give us your name. You've got three uh, minutes. Scott Young, and I own 381 Mount Hermon Road next door. And basically, my concerns are property values and the ability to, you know, rent the house. Uh, the lady that lives there, she's a nice person too. She's been there 30 years. And uh, oh, okay, I'm worried about the property values and and the rentability. If a uh, auto repair shop moves in, then you have, you know, cars lined up. They're going to repair. You know, then it comes a towing lot, junk cars, repaired cars, salvage cars. You know. The accumulation of cars will affect my property value and the ability to rent it. And you know, and then if he moves on, what do you do if you have a lot full of old tires and used oil and car parts and stuff that's hard and expensive to get rid of? So I, I think the potential harm to my property value and the ability to rent it, and then he moves off to some place, and you know, I still have to deal with all the junk and it still hurts, hurts my property value. Were you there when the antique cars were there? No, sir. I've owned the house, and I'm guessing probably Are you, you, You're living there, though? No, sir. I own it. You rent it? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, before we go any further, let me say to all of you, if you think that it'll dimis, diminish your property value, anybody can get up here and say that, but show us evidence. You have to have an evaluation of that property to show us that you will lose the value of your property because of something that goes in next door to you. And. Uh, I can say that, but I, I really don't know, and you don't either, but there are people who can do that for you. So that's one thing, uh, it's probably too late for those of you that are here now, but that's something that needs to be done to keep in mind. Uh, anyone else? Close the public hearing. Gary. I, I just have a question. As far as if this if this is approved, a, a number of vehicles. Um, you know, it says here a maximum number of vehicles stored on site shall be established. Is that established by us? Yes. Okay. Your motion. Did he? Can I? Just another question on top of that. Did he ever state how many vehicles he would be working on? I don't know if we ever clarified that to be able to put a number on that. I, I seem to remember reading here in the application that the applicant indicates that up to three vehicles will be stored on site as part of their application, as part of the text and that we got delivered. Yeah, that would be uh, established in your motion, three on site. Another question too is with the commercial property that's owned in Manchester, what is that purpose for? Is that for a mechanic shop, a shop right now? I was not aware of any property on Manchester. Is, is this in Manchester or uh, McMinnville? Okay. I, I want to clarify something. Correct me if I'm wrong, T Tanya. Um, if if this passes and guidelines are set, and there's let's say there's three cars limit on the, on the property. If, if a neighbor sees five cars out there and they call your office, 
what action do you take? If we get a complaint in our office, we would visit the site to verify that the complaint was valid, if there was actually a violation that was valid, and then we would take action on it. And if, and if Mr. Cruz violates any part of this, uh, if it's approved, your action would not only with the car number limit, other things you could go and take care of that as well, correct? Yes, we would address it with the owner and require him to remove the number of excess uh, vehicles in excess of three. At, and at, the, at this time, let's say for example, we do not approve this as a business. He could bring 10 cars out there and park them there, but not be working on them, but park them outside there and make it look like a junkyard, correct? If they were registered to him, personal and currently registered and operable vehicles, then yes. He could okay. park them out there. So it could look worse without this, possibly. If they have a tag on it. They if they have it. a tag on it. Yes. Okay, thank you. I'll make a motion, but it'll take me a minute or two to uh, get through it. In, in, it says will not adversely affect their other property, and it gives uh, A through G here the conditions, which are said three vehicles, that's part of my motion. All storage is inside, which is part of my motion and part of our, all any work he does has to be inside one of those buildings, not out in the driveway. Uh, no rollbacks, that type of uh, delivery vehicles. And if he can do those things, it won't be any worse than the antique cars that were there before. So you're making that a motion? I do. We have a second. I'll second. Got a second. Two seconds. Uh, are you wanting Follow to? Follow the roll, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Too late. Are you, <laughs> um, the first two conditions, did you say that you wanted to include those, uh, the privacy fence or vegetation? and the continued compliance it's, with it's a continued compliance in your recommendations okay but i just called out a couple of the of the of the general recommendations as part of my motion okay okay call the roll please mike curtis yes amber brown yes jerry sartain yes gary farley yes renee curtis yes patrick hill yes zane cantrell yes The next item we have is a request by Rocky Victory, and this is a special exemption for a major home-based business, and this is low-density residential. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application BZA 2023-29 involves the property at 6762 Jasper Johnson Road. It's a request for special exception approval for the establishment of a major home-based business involving auto repair and restoration upon a property located in the RL zone. This is a five-acre property, and um, as you can see by the aerials, there are numerous cars being stored on the property. The applicant has... Um, uh, had an open code enforcement complaint um, for quite some time and we printed out the um, uh, the permit summary and passed it out to you guys so you can see the history of this application this is the result of uh, code enforcement and the applicant would like to use the existing shop that measures approximately 1700 square feet to Repair cars, motorcycles, and boats. Repairs will include work such as changing motors, parts, and minimal body work. No signage is proposed. Employees will consist of the applicant and their brother. Business days of operation will be Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. No additional employees are proposed. This um, Long-term plans of the applicant include the construction of a home in the rear of the property and removal of the existing single wide. Uh, we received approximately 25 phone calls in opposition to this request and I also passed out some emails uh, to you uh, indicating opposition to this request. 
staff found that um, that it would be difficult for this particular major home-based business to continually operate uh, without impacting the surrounding area. You can, these are photos of the surrounding area. This is a photo of the site when the sign was posted. Uh, there were several cars there. And this is a plan, and it's probably easier to see in your uh, packets, but the applicant kind of identified where the activity was going to take place on the site. Um, he pointed out the buildings, uh, the septic tank field lines, uh, he, the privacy fence, uh, the parking for the home, as well as a privacy fence along uh, one property boundary and an area that's designated for customer parking, and it will be gated with a cattle gate. And these are photos from our pictometry, um, just giving you some different perspectives. Uh, you can see that maybe some of the vehicles are spilling over to, onto an adjacent uh, property but there are numerous vehicles and it looks like the activity kind of started around 2020 and has just uh, increased over time. And we have received some photos from some uh, neighbors and these photos have been taken um, last month and yesterday, uh, and so these, they wanted uh, you guys to, to see that this, is, this activity is occurring at all times. Uh, and they, uh, some of the aerials they obtained from our pictometry. So. And Tanya, did you wanna add anything? Just very briefly, um, give you a brief oversight. We got a complaint in April of 2022 on this property. Um, it included excess of vehicles and also trash and debris. Uh, the trash and stuff was uh, cleared up within the first couple of visits that we'd been there, but um, the number of vehicles continued to grow and exceed. At one point, uh, we did send Mr. Uh, Victory. He had uh, ceased responding to any of our requests or anything, and we had cited him to court. Um, so we have been to court with Mr. Victory. Um, and uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, our inspector is here, uh, the one that went out to the property. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there's a follow-up court uh, visit in the next month or so? Is, it, is Richard, can Richard come up here? Richard per permitted to come up and speak? Chairman? Yes, go, come ahead. That's okay. Um, I've, I've been to the property, uh, just uh, viewing from the road, uh, Mr. Victory, uh, we've been in contact with Mr. Victory recently, but uh, he uh, stated he preferred not uh, for us to be on the property uh, without legal, legal representation. Uh, we went to court, uh, I believe starting in July, and uh, we've, the uh, Judge Oshot has reset the court date pending the outcome of this hearing, and then pending uh, more visits to the property to see uh, what the status of the property and the uh, status of the vehicles on the property are. Yeah, wait, just any questions? At any time during this process, since April of 2022, has this property came into any type of compliance? No, it has not. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Is anyone here? I'm sorry. Just a quick question for yeah. Daniel. Do you know if they, um, if the property owner owns that adjacent property? Are you aware of that? No, it's only the five acre parcel. That, okay, yes. thank you. We have anyone here representing this. If you'll come around, please. Yeah. 
you'll give us your name and any of additional information. The first thing I'd like for you to answer is why do you have so many cars on your property? All right, my name is Rocky Victory. Um, they kind of stored there over. Uh, well, he was asking a question. That's why I was talking. But um, all right, first of all, um, there's we rented the property out until that's when the code's violation. We had stored some cars there. A couple. I've had some friends that stored cars there. We've had cars there. I mean, I've had that property for 10 years, and there's been cars there ever since. I worked out there years ago, and there's never been no complaints, and that, I never had no problems out of it. Um, there was no, comp the, the actual code complaint had come from the sheriff's department. We had leased that property out, the trailer, and uh, there was some cattle out. So they had come through the um, yard trying to get the cattle in there, and um, the sheriff's department had contacted the um, codes department about the trash. The cars was not the problem then. Um, of course, they come out there, talk to us, and then, of course, when they come out there about the trash, then the codes enforcer, of course, see some Who owns cars. these cars? Uh, who, who owns uh, the cars? I have a couple friends of mine. Uh, there's a couple people that I've let store over time, family members. Uh, I did a lot of paperwork on some of the cars so I can get rid of them. It's we, like a hundred cars out there. It's not that many. It looks more than it is, but uh, it's <laughs> it, we've moved a lot of cars from there. Um, so I had neighbors calling me before these meetings talking about how uh, tow trucks and stuff come, now, in, come in there at night. What, the, what's that uh, all about? There wasn't one call until after that sign was posted in my yard and then there was calls. I've been I've been there moving cars off of that property and stuff for over almost a year now, and there's not been no calls. Why do they call, come in at <clears throat> night? Is it are they wreck cars? I, I don't know. Uh, well, no, though there's there's not no there's not no wreck. I mean, there might be a couple wreck cars there, but some things have issues with them. Some are, some don't. Some do. Um, there is um, I don't know who called at nighttime, but I mean I my neighbors that live next door I haven't had no problem out of him. My neighbors that I mean. I, I've got a, I mean, the numerous people that signed a petition that live in the three streets that adjourn my street, and there's, I mean, I got about 30, 40 people, and on the three roads that come in and out of there. You got to know that you have to have a, uh, permits and things well, I wasn't for a junkyard. Working, I wasn't working there, and I wasn't running a junkyard. I just let people store cars there that had issues with them. Um, I know a lot. I got a lot of friends and family members and then I just I've had that property for so long and <clears throat> it was empty for a while so we just throw move a car out there or something and then um, we rented it out to some people that uh, was having a hard time so we rented the uh, the trailer out before that and of course that's when they had a bunch of trash and just piled a bunch of trash up and then of course that's when the codes had come and uh, I guess uh, the sheriff's department had called them when they had come out there um, after that uh, Let's see, I'm trying to think the date time. We ended up getting them evicted. I guess it was mm, September, somewhere roughly around last year, September, somewhere around in there of last year. Um, I moved back out there. Me and my wife's going to divorce us, uh, so let's see. Maybe how many cars have you moved? A while? How, how many? About 20. Has the number went down since, yes, it's since went April? Down. Yeah, it's went down. I just, I can't just get rid of people's cars that are not in my name, I've, I've, which I've talked to Richard about. So a lot of the cars, they're, I had to find the person. I've, I've told people to come get them, but I've, you got to file paperwork with the state to get rid of them or sell them if, they're, if you've had them for so long. And it takes, um, you know, they send it, if there's a lien holder or something, you don't know who's on the front of it, you know, what, who was on the front of the title. And then they'll send the paperwork to them, we'll send the paperwork to them. But uh, I actually done process a bunch of paperwork on a bunch of them, and I've been moving them out. That's actually, if you look at, the, I know the photos, but if you look at the photos in the front, them are the same cars. It's not like they're different cars going in and out of there. And about six of them cars are tagged in my name. Um, so, um, I mean, they're actually registered to me. Just counting what <coughs> I can see, there are at least 50 automobiles of some kind sitting there, and you just can't do that. No, I understand You've got that to have a... You've, you've, you've got to establish a, a, some kind of junkyard or something to no, that effect. Yes, sir. I'm not, I'm not trying to establish a junkyard. I actually want them gone just as much as everybody else. I've been moving them as best I can, the ones that I can move legally that are mine, that I can move. Uh, so if then, somebody takes a, uh, if I take my car and put it in your front yard, it doesn't belong to you, 
you can't have it towed? Well, I can have it towed, but uh, some of them are people that we know and we they get you know we let them put them out there and storm. I said I didn't know in the county that you couldn't have so many cars or store. I never knew that. Okay. I know Amber, the city. Amber over here has a question. Go ahead. Amber. Uh, do you get paid for this storage? Because no, you keep saying no, storage. So no, no, I just like like I got some friends or family members and stuff, and I just let them store. I was, like they had a car that was messed up. They it, they got a new car and they put their old car out there. Or they had a car that maybe was wrecked or the motor messed up in it or something. So yeah. my other question is, do you you were telling a different story but are you back living on this property now yes ma'am since okay. the uh, end of december beginning of january but i i currently have a shop that's i'm moving from to uh at um uh, that was in town and then of course i'm move out there and live out there and work from out there um and like i said <clears throat> i know that she's they've had a lot of i mean i I had one neighbor. What do you do went, in your shop? Huh? I answered the question. Mike, no, go ahead. Mike, did you have yeah, one? Yes. Patrick, did you have one? What do we do? Um, I, I fix fix cars. I mean, I fix transmissions, but I mean, I fix a lot of cars. And sell, you know, we sell four or five cars a year. Uh, I fix them. We you know buy a car that has some damage or something, repair it. You know, sell it. But you know, or I fix cars for people. I mean, that's what I've done. I mean, I've had that property, like I said, for years i've never had no problems out there until the county had come out there for um, some animals that was out and like i said that's how the whole codes violation started it wasn't because of cars and then <clears throat> there was no call-ins of cars until that sign that sign that from the planning department was posted in there and then there was there was no issues from nobody um, okay thank you very much we appreciate it you may be seated we'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request commissioner come around good to have you with us Hello everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Jonathan Beverly. I am the County Commissioner for District 6, which is the district in which this issue lies. I was asked to sh come here tonight to speak to you directly for some citizens who could not come. And I think I share in the same observation you had, I didn't get a single call in favor of this being granted. When I look over this application, I see that our own planning department said it did not meet the standards. It did not meet something that we needed to approve. I've heard concerns about traffic, noise complaints, numerous cars, but what troubles me is the codes violation and how it was handled. If you all were to grant this variance, how do we follow up? Our folks are not even allowed on the property. We're having to extend the arm of the courts in order for us to be effective. We saw how one individual came up in order to address this before it became a codes violation. That's what we want to encourage. I'm worried about the precedent that's been set. So I speak for myself and then also for the citizens who contacted me. I'm not in favor of this project. Thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner, we appreciate it. Anyone else? Who's next? Come on up. Hello, my name's Bill Sellers, and thank you for letting me speak for just a minute. I've lived on Jasper Johnson Road. My property abuts his. I've been there 41 years. When I first moved there, it was a one-lane gravel road. I've seen it paved. We used to laugh that it was widened enough to put a yellow line down the middle. I've seen generations of children being pushed in a baby cart up to uh, learning to ride a bicycle uh, and uh, roller skate and things like that. It's a one mile long dead end road. We moved there because of that, because of the community, the families, uh, next door's five generations. And uh, the road is so narrow that the school bus doesn't even come down to the road to pick up the children. They take their children to the head of the road for the bus to pick them up. There have been multiple times that there are, there's no shoulder on the road, so sometimes if the wreckers come in, uh, they have to park partially blocking the road. And uh, I think that the, the community 
of Jasper Johnson Road is families, and I think that they deserve the, the quiet, peaceful life that they, they came there for. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank, Thank you. you. Next. My name is Chris Garrett, and I live at 6219 Jasper Johnson Road. Moved there about six years ago. We have a five acre tract and also bought the farm that it's adjacent to my property that is on Mankin McKnight Road. There's 26 acres there. Um, while it's a low density zoning, I'm a, I'm a licensed real estate broker in Murfreesboro and have a company here. Um, there are 19 homes on one mile stretch. Um, so five acre tracks, even some two acre tracks up to some, some farms, agriculture. Um, while there's not an evaluation before and after that something's removed, I can tell you I've had great difficulty selling a property that there was trash and debris and refuse on the property next door. Um, it has a significant impact on the value of that property. Um, th the thing that I, I'm, I'm further up the road, but the thing that I noticed the most is the increase in traffic over the last two years. Um, rollbacks consistently going down the road. Um, we moved there because it, it was a dead end road and we loved the fact that it would be very little traffic. It would be people we know and we have the phone numbers and call and talk to our neighbors. We all have just a, a great community there. Um, you know, when you go by that property, the trailer that's on the property is boarded up. The, the windows are boarded up. I don't know how someone could live in that property. Um, I don't feel like it's someone that has come into the community to be a good neighbor. I have no problem if I have a neighbor that wants to work on his car. I mean, that's, we live in the country, right? But I think it's a business trying to be in a residential community, and I'd ask that you deny this. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Anyone else? My name is Pam Sellers and I live on Jasper Johnson Road, 6916. I'm two houses, three houses down from this business. I vote no on this spot hearing for this major home business. And actually, it's not just now, it's been there. It has been there with the pictures that Danielle has from the photographs of 2019. One car, two cars to 2023 to where they're 40 and 50 cars. It is a dead end road, it's one mile, it's a family road. And yes, there are children on it, there are bicycles, there are training wheels, there are mothers pushing babies in carts. And there are rollback things, there are wreckers that come in, there are boats that's parked there. They're on the side of the road and there are no shoulders here. I have two granddaughters that have just learned to drive and both of them were absolutely just saying, that's just too much, I can't even get by the car. So, you know, they're young and they're beginning to drive and it was really difficult for them. As for noise, I mean, it's visual, it's auditory, and if I live next door, probably olfactory. I worked for a live hospice for 20 years. I was their night call nurse. I was responsible for Rutherford County and the surrounding counties. I got calls for deaths, pain crisis, families in grief, I'm out at one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning coming home. I have a Ford C-Max that is a hybrid that's half electric and half gas. When I got home on Jasper Johnson Road, I rolled my windows down. I have no noise in my car. I have nothing but nature sounds coming in unless it's raining. And I coasted home five, 10, 15 miles an hour, no more, no noise. My son used to tell me, Mom, you're gonna kill all the deer because they can't hear you coming. I got to 6762 Jasper Johnson Road multiple times at one, two, three o'clock in the morning. The lights are on in the garage. There's music playing. There's noise going on. The neighbors next door are four generations and the fourth generation is four children under five. The privacy fence that was on here, this is, they put the privacy fence up, $800 paid for it, so that their children would not be looking right at that or listening to profanity at any time or whatever that this was done. So um, as far as no noise, no known activity, and I saw the garbage, I had rats at my bird feeder for the first time ever in my life living there. I thought they were squirrels till I saw the tail. They had to come from the garbage. 
down the road. Well, the garbage did get moved. The cars have not gotten moved. The cars are more. I made pictures yesterday that Danielle put up. I, I, I went down the driveway to see my neighbor. And I mean, they're, they're, car, they're cars and they're always there. And they're even more than that. On many occasions, they're out to the very end of Jasper Johnson and on the side of the road. We have a pontoon boat that we go by and in the summertime, sometimes it was just, it's a little too much. So sure. I vote no, but thank you very much. And we'll, well the watch other out thing, for those chickens out there too. <laughs> Yes, there are chickens, and we had a bobcat that we caught in a heart trap that ate 21 chickens. So, you know, we have wildlife. We have a lot of wildlife, and we don't need a major home-based business right. in a residential community. Thank so you I'll very much. Go. Thank you. Anyone else? My husband, James W. Jernigan, Jr., we own the property at 6745 Low Road that backs up to Jasper Johnson. When you go on Jasper Johnson Road and you come to the little bridge, our property starts on the left. And I counted nine mailboxes to the end of our property line. Um, Jasper Johnson holds a special meaning to our family because my husband's grandmother was raised on that road. That's been many, many moons ago. We do not plan on uh, developing that property, but my children may. That is, if my, our grand, my granddaughter will let them because she loves her horses and she loves it out there. But I plead with you to do something about this. This is so sad. It shouldn't be this way because that's a lovely, and, and it's, you don't find many places where that you can go for the peace and quiet. We need it, and that's been interrupted with this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Pam Owens. Um, I live on Big Springs Road, which is right, you go down Jasper and then turn on Big, Big Springs. The reason, I've been here since I was five years old in Murfreesboro, lived on Hamilton Drive, 1614 Hamilton Drive growing up. And um, I got married uh, 20 years ago and um, I had been down at uh, Jasper Johnson to bike. And I, and I fell in love with it out there. I didn't think that the county was any better than the city because I love the city. But because of how pretty it was, and there's always flowers any time of the year and things like that. So we bought a house out there. My husband fell in love with my boss's house over on Big Springs Road. I worked for 15 years at the hospital over the home care agency, and then I worked 15 years at NHC, and I've just retired just recently. Currently, I work at Rudd Medical over at the jail as a nurse practitioner. Um, I love it out there. It's restful, it's beautiful. You can bike, you can, I mean, now there's a little traffic going up Big Springs Road back and forth, but it'll stop as soon as things are built, you know, that are proper. It's beautiful, the way y'all have approved development out there, it's beautiful. There are nice houses, there's plenty of room. Even out 41A, the way that y'all have developed that, I mean, it's great. I love the way you've managed it and everything. But um, I, I vote no, and um, it's, it's ugly. My husband was appalled. He was using a bulldozer when I came, so he's not here with me. But Warren and Pam Owens, and um, I vote no. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Close the public hearing. Take a handle a motion on this. Mr. Chairman, um, before, I, before I make my motion, I just feel it's for somebody to come up and try to get something approved after they've had, since April of 2022, been uh, blatant not trying to come in compliance with our codes department. Uh, I, I just I have concerns with that, but I'll make a motion that we actually deny the request because it does not meet the requirements set forth by the planning department. And also it's a detriment to that 
uh, area out there that, and, and with that being said, what time, and I know you probably need to get a second, go ahead and get a second, I, and I want to quit. I'll, ask I'll give him a second to continue. All right. Go ahead a second. Go ahead. For our director. Got a motion and a second. Yeah. Go ahead. For our director of, of codes. I know this is so large that once we get, uh, if this, if this passes, my denial uh, motion passes, it's going to take some time to get this cleaned up. How long, who decides that time frame to get this clean? Because I know once that time frame is up, there's, there's, there's things that need to happen after that if they don't comply. Uh, so could, can you answer that? So in a scenario like this where it, it is large, we would start out with 30 days and we would then monitor it every 30 days to make sure that there was substantial progress in cleaning the property up. We would let that go for probably six to nine months to make sure that everything's moving along. If progress ceases, then we would opt to go to court. And the reason I bring that up, if this, if this, if my, uh, my motion passes, I want the people out there to know that there would be a time frame out there to go through this process and what can happen afterwards. With well, that being said, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll stop and let Okay, vote. No, that's a good point. Um, a few years ago, we had something very similar to this, and we, uh, our, our people went out there and checked, and they have to show that so much is moving out over a period of time. Nothing coming in, it's all coming out. So it takes a little time. Now, there's gotta be a plan of corrective action on this process, for, and that way everybody knows the person that owns the property and and the people out there know what the plan is and that's that's why i'm bringing it up okay good we have a motion and a second that it be denied call the roll please mike curtis yes amber brown yes jerry sartain yes gary farley yes renee curtis patrick hale yes zane cantrell yes the next item we have is a request by earl crow who is requesting a special exemption for an accessory dwelling. And what do you have on that, please? Bear with me for a second. Okay. Oh, long one. Okay, this is um, an application for special exception uh, for an accessory dwelling unit, and, um, and the application number is 202331. And the applicant is seeking special exception approval to construct a detached accessory dwelling unit on the back of the property for a family member. Uh, this subdivision is located on the septic system um, and the applicant uh, plans to reside in the existing principal dwelling and a family member will reside in the ADU. So apart from not measuring an acre, we find that the request meets the criteria for special exception. And that concludes our presentation. We have anyone here representing this request? We'll come around, please. Give us your name and any additional information. Earl Crow. I have no additional information, but I am here for any questions. I don't know what your proposal is here. I just see a kind of a, a sketch, but his ADUs. Uh, Still meet all the setbacks and everything for your property, yes, sir. even if you don't have enough room. Yes, sir. Five feet off the fence and 40 feet off the front. Five feet right. off the back. When he goes through the permitting process, he'll have to demonstrate meeting all the setbacks and to um, ensure that if, if there are any easements on the property that it's not encroached upon. Thank you. I just want to know what is the structure is going to look like and what you intend for that to look like. Yes, ma'am. It's a single level building, uh, 35 by 45, uh, 35 wide, 45 long, with a garage situated in the front and a living quarter in the back. Is it going to match the house? Yes, sir, it will. Any other questions? 
Thank you. you. May be seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. We have a motion. I, I move we approve with staff comments. It be approved. Okay. We have a second. Call the roll, please. Mike Curtis. Yes. Amber Brown. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Gary Farley. Yes. Renee Curtis. Yes. Patrick Hale. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. That concludes our business. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you. Before you guys leave, I just.